What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverState.com, and welcome to this week's deadlift session. Now, this is actually the first time that I'll be deadlifting in just about three weeks because about three weeks ago, I tweaked my lat doing some uh, weighted pull-ups, and then right after the weighted pull-ups, I tried doing some rows to see if that would work out, and I was getting really sharp pain, so uh, I decided maybe we'll give it a little bit of time. A couple days later, I came back and tried to deadlift, and every time I tried to hold the bar close to my body on anything above 315, I was getting that same sharp pain so I decided it was time to start training around the lat for a little bit and uh, all that training has gone really really well. I've been fortunate enough to hit a few good numbers and I'm slowly rehabbing the lat back in. Start out with some really lightweight rows to some body weight pull-ups uh, to some heavier rows and today is going to be my first day back deadlifting. Now before we even get into the training I really really want to thank all of you who participated in any sort of fashion for my YouTube live that happened last week. Whether it was just asking questions on Instagram, which I was so thankful for, otherwise I wouldn't have had anything to talk about, or if you were actually there, if you were actually able to make the Instagram live, I thank you so much. The support was great, it was a great crowd. Um, I do need to apologize. That was my first YouTube live that I have ever done, seen, I've never watched one, I've never, I have, I have no idea what was going on and I didn't know how to get to the live feed to get to your live questions. Uh, so I didn't wanna just go clicking buttons cause I was afraid I was gonna get kinda closed out of the actual thing and then I couldn't get back in. So uh, I just left it how it was and it is what it is, but I had such a good time. Also, if you did leave a question either on my Instagram page or the Lowell Brands Instagram page about that YouTube live, make sure you watch that thing cause we announced all of the giveaway winners we gave away at least 10 t-shirts, at least five programs, and we announced your names right there on it, and we need you guys to DM us to make sure that we can get out the stuff to the right people. So make sure you do that. And guys, I thank you so much for all of those questions, because without that, I really, I couldn't have talked for an hour and a half about, but without that live feed, I was, I would have been lost. So, and speaking of questions, guys, the question of the week for this training video, if you choose to participate, you can leave your answer down in the comments below. But question of the week is, out of these two options, which is harder for you? The physical side of training, where uh, some people have a really hard time getting through the doors of the gym or staying there for all of their reps and sets or making it to the full four times that week or however many times a week you're supposed to get to the gym. Some people struggle with that because they don't really enjoy the training process maybe or maybe they're just so busy. So is that the harder part for you or is the dieting part the harder part of your training. So if you are trying to drop body fat this season, uh, you're probably in some sort of calorie restriction, you're hungry a lot, maybe hangry sometimes, is that hard for you? Or conversely, if you're trying to put on weight and you're trying to eat a lot of food when you're already full and you're not hungry whatsoever but you need to keep stuffing it in, that is ridiculously hard as well. Some people actually think that is a lot harder than calorie restriction. So for you guys, what is the missing piece right now? What are you struggling the most with? Is it more of the getting into the physical gym and doing that aspect or is it more the diet aspect? I would love to know what you guys are thinking on this to help guide me towards future videos and other content that might be useful to you guys. So if you do wanna participate, leave your answers in the comment section down below. For me personally, um, I'm kind of bulletproof when it comes to food. Because of being sick for so many years now, uh, if you were to tell me that I could not eat for four days, I would be like, that's really no problem at all. And if you told me that I needed to shove down 12 protein shakes a day, I'd tell you I'd do my best and try to hold down as much of it as I possibly could. Uh, I don't look forward to meals. I don't look forward to food anymore. That part of me died. Uh, a couple years ago. Hopefully someday it will come back and I'll be excited about eating and excited about meals and things like that again. Uh, but for right now, I am bulletproof when it comes to that side of the training. For me, for the first time in my entire life, the actual getting in and the motivation to get in the train is actually the harder portion for me. And the reason why is because I keep having these little nagging injuries that don't allow me to do the type of lifting that I want to do. I'm a strong man at heart. Once I did some strong man training, I swore I would never go back to any other thing because of how much fun and how functional it is. And uh, when you have little things, because my body cannot hold on to the nutrients the way that it's supposed to, I get hurt a lot, right? So I have this lat thing going on right now. I'm in therapy for my Achilles tendon right now, so I can't jump around, I can't carry things. I can't run around and do the things that are fun to me lifting. So right now I'm doing very basic stuff. And to be honest with you guys, I've been doing very basic stuff for 25 years and it's just not, as motivating to get in to do that. So uh, for me right now, actually getting into the gym for the first time in my life is the harder part of those two aspects. So while you guys are watching some of the early rounds of this, I wanted 
to answer a question for you guys because I owe it to you. This is the most asked question by far for the YouTube Live and I did not cover it because to be honest with you, I didn't know what to say without really thinking about my answer. I wanted to give it a little bit more thought. So we are gonna talk about training, but first I need to give you guys the answer to this question. So many of you want to know how I stay positive or how I stay motivated to keep training, to keep doing what I do. How do, how do I keep my mindset uh, when so many bad things have happened to me and are currently happening to me. And uh, I just didn't know how to really explain that without really letting it digest in my head a little bit. But now I think uh, the, the truth of the matter is I don't really see it that much as a choice because I try my best not to look at things as good things or bad things. I just look at things kind of like things, right? And they're constantly coming at you uh, almost like punches. like. You're dodging, you're, you're weaving, you're trying to slip and sometimes they catch you and it hurts and sometimes they catch you hard and you get knocked on your butt and a problem will put you down for a couple days that you need to deal with because it's a real problem and stuff like that. But for the most part, guys, uh, bad things are coming at you constantly. Now, maybe you've been sheltered from that or maybe you haven't taken enough risks in your life, but bad things happening and problems are just part of what make life life. Now, the problem with that is perspective because a lot of people want to look at it as a positive or a negative thing and I think a lot of people's biggest problem in both the gym and in life is that they don't think they're supposed to have problems they think that they're gonna get on a program it's just gonna go smoothly they're never gonna have an injury they're never gonna have a setback they're never gonna miss PR it's just gonna be linear progression all the way along and I think that whether it be in the gym or in a relationship or life or whatever but that's just not reality, it's like Instagram. Like you have the airbrushed perfect picture with all the filters and then you have the real thing that, that happens, you know? Like you have all these plans and it, it all goes to heck. But I think maybe a corner that I've turned that maybe some others haven't is having the realization that all these bad things, all of my failures, my biggest hurts, my biggest pains, a lot of my biggest regrets in life are also my biggest motivators. They are what drive me, they are what help me prove people wrong, they make me have my work ethic, it's what has built all of my drive. I would not have accomplished nearly as much if I had had an easy life where things had been given to me. If all these bad things did not happen to me, it's very likely that I would not be the man that I am standing here before you today and I would not be proud of who I am. Every single bad thing that happens can either be used towards construction as like a motivator to build you up, to build you into wherever you're trying to get, or it can be used for destruction and it can become the, you know, the victim mindset. Every single bad thing that comes in can be the reason, the excuse for why you did not get the things that you wanted in your life. So when things come in, try not to look at them as like positive or negative. Try to look at them as like, all right, so it came in and guys, don't get me wrong. I get frustrated. I get mad just like everyone else and there's nothing wrong with that. But then I accept the fact that this bad thing happened and now how am I going to use it? Am I going to use it for construction to build me forward or am I going to use it for destruction as an excuse for why I can't get things done? All right, because if I focused on destruction all the time through all these bad things that have been happening to me, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere, guys. So I just look at it as each one of these things is building me, making me more and more into the person that I'm going to be built up and to become. And every single one of these hardships makes me harder. It makes me stronger. It makes me tougher. It makes me be able to put up with things that other people have. And I face so many of my fears that other people would never face their fears. And uh, it has honestly made me into the man I am. So if you guys are asking yourself how to keep a good mindset or how to stay motivated in the gym or how to do whatever, man, it's not about positive or negative. A lot of the most negative people in the world that I know aren't bad people at all. They just have lost perspective. Even when I was in my absolute worst spot ever, throwing up 50 times a day, laying on the floor, couldn't get up, wanted to die, I still thought about the fact that there are entire countries in worse situations every single day of their lives than I was then. So guys, it's not about positive or negative. It's about taking whatever comes, get mad if you want to get mad, then accept it, and then is it going to be a construction or a destruction? That choice is absolutely yours. So if you guys are interested in working your mindset and more than just working your muscles this week, I would challenge you guys that as problems or bad things come in, sure, get mad if you want to, but then accept that it happened and then try to make a decision whether you're gonna use this for construction or destruction. Are you gonna use this to build you towards your goals or are you gonna use this as an excuse for why you did not get to your goals? Anyway, we should probably talk some training now. All right guys, so what you're looking at here is a beltless axle pause deadlift on a hot and sweaty, humid day. And the reason why, 
We are doing beltless axle pause deadlifts on a hot, humid, sway days because my brain hates to work at 50%. It is just unmotivating to me. And knowing that I'm a little bit tweaked up right now, knowing that I had to go in and just do a small percentage of my deadlift PR uh, for a bunch of reps, I could not wait for that workout to be over. So what I do instead is just choose a variation that is naturally a lot harder than it normally would be. So on a hot and sweaty day, an axle is gonna be very, very hard to hold on to. And then if I don't throw my belt on, it's gonna be harder still. So then I'm still able to get amped up for my big sets. I'm still excited to be in there. Everything can be completely normal. I can still push the way that I wanna push, only I have a lot less chance of re-injuring the area because I can't throw around quite as much weight. Now, this workout ended up being a really great success for me. My top set did end up being 550 pounds, which is right around where I figured I would be, but it's still really good to get there and not have any real pain in the lat. I could definitely feel it. I can feel it kind of playing around in there and it's unhappy with me, but no real pain. So that is excellent. It shows that it's healing and that I am getting better. So. After I got done my top set, I ended up dropping back for a little bit of volume, just a little bit, and then I moved on to my assistance. Now, for my assistance, the first part was a good morning with the safety pin set to the start of my deadlift height. And I know that's a really long name, but all that means is that I set the safety pins in the cage to a height where my back is going to be as if I reach down for a deadlift. Now, what that's gonna do is make sure that I'm using the good morning in a full range of motion type of way to assist my deadlift. And so if I set the pins to a spot and I go down, I tap those pins every single time, I know I'm using good range of motion and I'm not cutting anything short. Yes, I do have to go a little bit lighter. This is only around 245 pounds, but it doesn't matter because I'm still getting really, really good stimulus for the things I'm trying to work to better my deadlift. Now, the other half of the assistance was a timed T-bar row. So I was going for 40 seconds, three plates on the T-bar row, uh, and just trying to get as many reps as I could. I honestly wasn't trying to keep count. Uh, I was just trying to put my mind elsewhere and just trying to rehab it a little bit. Once got done that, I moved on to my final assistance was just a little bit of one and a half glute ham raises. Uh, sets probably eight, 10, somewhere there, and then a little bit of rear delt flies with a band because again, doing a little bit more rehab for kind of that tweaked lat area and it's never a bad idea to have stronger rear delts when it comes to something like a deadlift. So overall training day went really well. I'm very, very happy with it. And 550 with a little tweaked up wing, it's a good day for me. Again, I thank you guys so much for all your support with that YouTube Live thing. If you guys did leave a question on Instagram, make sure you go back and watch that video because if I announce that you want something, you gotta DM me and then I'm gonna shoot you out your program or if it was for the Lola brand, they will shoot you out a t-shirt, but you have to DM them. So guys, I thank you so much for everything that you guys do. If you guys did wanna participate in the question of the week, remember I'm asking where the physical part, the physical training of showing up, getting the sets, getting the reps, getting all that in, done. Is that the hard part for you? or? is the dieting, the either eating more than you want to or eating less than you want to. What part of those two is the harder part for you? Uh, again, I'm just trying to use this to kind of push towards more of the next move videos that I want to make and the next programs that I write for, write for you guys. I just want a better idea of what you guys are interested in, what is hard for you. So I do thank you guys so much. And thank you for listening to that little bit of a tirade about, you know, problems and how I stay positive and stay motivated. Uh, maybe there was someone out there who needed to hear that. So um, I just thank you guys so much for absolutely everything. I will catch you guys later in the week. Until I do go out to something amazing, realize keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. I'll see you then.